Hello, this is Adam from Pinheads Pinball, and I've got a Fliptronic 2 board on the bench. Uh, it came in, someone was uh, said that there was an issue with the upper right, upper right flipper sticking. So we're going to take a look at this board and uh, see if we can't reproduce those problems. I'd also have a little bit of fun uh, doing a bench test on this board without the presence of a CPU board. So we've got this out of the game on the bench. So we'll do a little schematic walk through. We've got two sets of switch inputs, these two headers here. One here for connection to the flipper, flipper opto switches, and then another, another here for the connection to the normally open and a stroke switches. So they're dedicated switches, ground activated. So on these six pin headers, you have one key pin that's lost. Uh, pin six on both is your ground, and then the other uh, op four open pins are for the four uh, flipper switches, lower left, lower right, upper left, upper right, and then your four end of stroke switches on potentially up to four coils. Uh, to the left we've got uh, a ribbon cable header pin which is shown here in the schematic. This is for communicating to and communications to and from the CPU board. Uh, you communicate the, the state of the various switches, both the cabinet flipper switches and also the end of stroke switches, and the computer will be able to control uh, the actual state of the coils, which we will which we'll talk about a little bit here. Okay, other portions of the board. Uh, we've got uh, AC power input here, right next to the bridge rectifier. So AC voltage comes here, it's rectified with this bridge rectifier, and then it's split into four DC uh, supply circuits, which are shown here, independently fused. And those feed the uh, DC voltage power to the flippers. And then the output is here for Fliptronics 2. This is the flipper return. So this is actually what's grounding the hold side of the coil or the power side of the coil to actually turn the flipper on. Okay, so what no would normally happen set up in a game is you'd have your AC in here, your DC out here, uh, you'd have these all wired up to the flippers, and you'd have this connected to the CPU, you'd have this connected to power, which is a 5 volt, 12 volt uh, DC and a ground, and you have these connected to the, to the switches on the on the game, both uh, flipper and a stroke. On the bench, we don't have that here. So we have a little special setup to do a bench test of this board that I've been messing around with. And it seems to, at least on a basic level, provide some functionality testing. So the first thing we're going to need to do is provide uh, DC voltage. So we have uh, plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, and then ground coming in to this set of header pins here. Uh, we have just a single pulse, single throw push button switch here connected to the flipper switch and then another connected to you can see that better here to the end of stroke switches and then on the CPU all we need to worry about this header pin is grounding the blanking circuit which is at pin 27 shown right here so ground that blanking circuit and then a couple other connections shown, let's see if I can point to this well, shown here. Uh, on the norm, normal Williams Electronic 2 board, there's uh, four potential jumper positions. Uh, W3 and W4 are populated, W1 and W2 are not. So on this, this is actually a pin LED aftermarket board. So I've, I've had to solder a couple uh, test pins onto W1 and W2. So you want to ground W1 and this will um, enable the buffers to actually buffer the data. So if you don't have the W1 grounded, when you press a switch that signal won't get through the buffers. It'll just stop at the buffers. And then you have to feed some sort of clock signal to W2 and that will actually enable the registers to write data from input to output. If you don't have a clock signal on that it's not going to work. So all we have here is we got these two two push button switches here 
and all we have to do is connect them to the header pins and press a button. So you notice that uh, here I'm doing flipper switch uh, pin 1 which is getting close to ground and I got a couple of uh, Siegecraft uh, solenoid testers here. Now there's <laughs> more pins than one of these solenoid testers will fit so I've got two kind of in tandem. And you press a button and it's showing that the transistor's closed. So that is that portion is working properly. Now again, this is just bypassing all CPU control the, of the of the board. This is simply just testing the buffers, the registers, and the transistors, the output transistors to show that you have functionality and you don't have anything locked on. So pressing the cabinet switch will get one and pressing an end to stroke switch will get two. So you just march through your connections. So we're all working. I'll do the end of strokes. Was it working? So unless there's an issue with the logic chips that are communicating to and from the CPU, this board should work in a game. So you can throw this back, I'll throw this back in a game, and if the flippers don't work, uh, then I'm going to start investigating the logic chips uh, that communicate between the, the CPU and the, the registers and the buffers on the Fliptronics board. Okay, so that Fliptronic 2 board worked just fine in uh, Star Trek Next Generation. So I was not able to reproduce the issues. Uh, my guess is there was a, maybe a mechanical issue or an electrical problem in the pinball machine that the board came out of that's, that's causing the issues that they're having. So I wanted to show you the Fliptronic 2 board that I pulled out of that next gen when I put in the pin LED. And this is an OEM board, uh, pretty much the same board as the pin LED with the exception that the logic chips on the OEM board are through hole parts and the transistors are your more traditional BJT style transistor, tip 102 for the drive and pre-drive, whether it's a hold or a, a power side of the coil that it's controlling, and tip 36 Cs for the, the power drive for the actual uh, power strokes of the four coils. And otherwise, it's it's the same, same pinouts and everything. These transistors are a lot easier to test with your multimeter, just putting it on diode test and checking the the various legs of the transistor to make sure you've got the appropriate voltage drop. But it's not so straightforward with uh, the FET transistors that are used in the pin LED board. So I hope you had found this somewhat interesting and have fun working on pinball. Don't hurt yourself.